Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Light Dark Academy. My name is Giuseppe Improta and in today's video we talk about colors. In a previous episode we talked about light temperatures, the temperatures that are most commonly used and the ones that you should know as an artist, uh, indoor temperatures and outdoor temperatures. Today though I just wanted to do a little bit of summary about colors. So we know that the objects are made of different colors but what does that exactly mean? The colors come from the pigments that an object is made of and pigments are basically molecules or substances that are present in nature in many different forms. There are pigments in rocks, in minerals, in crystals and there are pigments in other creatures that maybe we eat. For example flamingos are pink not when they are born, when they are grey, but after a while, after their diet is contributing to their color. And even human beings actually develop their sensitivity to uh, the colors in the first five months on average of their life. But babies can see the red color, for example, as early as two weeks from the birth. Now the pigments are molecules that basically interact with the light, so they absorb certain frequencies and they reflect others. If a pillow for example is a green, that's because it's absorbing, those pigments are absorbing all the frequencies of the light except the green, then it's bounced back into our eyes. Is it because of pigments that all the objects are colored? No, there are objects uh, whose structure is actually such that they trap certain frequencies of light and then they reflect others. For example, there are some blue uh, butterflies that are made in that specific way and because that is the structure of the object that is actually uh, affecting how the light is bounced back into our eyes, you will see that while the pigments stay consistent, if we move around we don't see color changing, uh, in that case in the case of this specific butterfly or other objects that are similarly structured, when you move around there is a difference in the way the light is bounced to our eyes. In nature there are all sorts of pigments and pigments is basically what was used originally to create uh, uh, colors that then the artist would use. But uh, the real pigments or the real colors have only been developed in the uh, 1800th century. Before that there were a lot of scammers that would sell artists colors that would discolor quickly or maybe would also uh, tint with the, with the canvas, they would react to the canvas and so it was a little bit of a hit and miss when you when, uh, when you wanted to buy some of these colors. The, the discovery of colors so in, in terms of like uh, uh, the primary colors that we use in uh, most of our uh, computer graphic application is uh, obviously because Newton figured out with the light passing through a prism that this color would separate and so he theorized that the separation of color, the color theory. But it was Munzel that actually picked this color uh, that Newton discovered and put them along the color wheel which is probably the most used tool for an artist today. He also associated the uh, colors uh, with the notes, with musical notes, starting from the red and the C and then moving forward uh, according to the order of the notes. There are then other categories of objects that, that have very specific uh, features, like for example luminescent or phosphorescent or fluorescent objects that basically are capable of either emitting light or absorbing light and releasing it slowly uh, so that they can control serve effectively these photons, this energy inside their bodies for a longer period of time and the light instead of being reflected all at once is basically staying in the body and then slowly 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 released. So if you understand now what pigments are it might be true that we are what we eat. And uh, for example even Mars is red because there is uh, iron oxide which is the same uh, substance that is also in our blood and has this uh, reddish color. 
Now, some pigments in nature are more rare than others, and in particular, if you look around you, like you won't see many objects in nature that are blue, and uh, the, there are very few animals as well that are blue, and one is the butterfly we talked about, uh, that is not really a pigment, it's not really blue because it's a pigmented blue, but it's because of their structure um, that reflects the light that way. There are some animals though that have this blue pigment, uh, like for example, the blue poison on dark frog. Today though we don't really use these pigments as much as we used to because we have synthetic pigments, synthetic colors, which are basically made of multiple elements and uh, done through chemical reactions. Now they do not match 100% uh, the original pigments, uh, but they are close enough and uh, also because it's a process we can control, we can actually create all sorts of tones and variations of those colors. But if you want to pick the pigment uh, that that is actually in nature for that specific uh, red, for example a carmine red, you have to buy that pigment which is going to be really expensive because those pigments are really limited in nature. And uh, that's why we have also come up with the synthetic uh, colors because uh, using those pigments gets really expensive really fast. So I hope this was an interesting video, it's a little bit less technical but it's just to give you an idea of how things around us are made and are colored. In the next video we will talk about the psychology of colors and how the colors affect our perception. Please, if you like my content, uh, subscribe to this channel, maybe hit the bell so you are notified of the new videos and uh, feel free to leave a comment below asking me for new topics to talk about. I'm always happy to reply and to read your comments and uh, I hope you enjoyed this quick video about colors. That's it for today, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!